Office of Legal Counsel. Why is this such a significant position, and why do you think and do you think she was forced out? Well, the Office of Legal Counsel is incredibly important. It's essentially the office within the Justice Department that determines the scope and limitations of presidential authority. It's the office that George Bush and Dick Cheney used, for example, to legalize torture and warrantless eavesdropping because opinions issued by that office become the binding opinion of the executive branch. So it's the office that is charged with opining about the uh, proper limits of, of executive authority, what the president can and can't do under the law and the Constitution. What made Don Johnson's appointment as OLC chief so extraordinary and, and something to celebrate, and I did celebrate it when it was announced back in January of 2009, was that she had, was one of the most vocal opponents of the Bush assault on the rule of law and the Constitution. And not only was she an opponent of it legalistic. Again, Glenn Greenwald. Sometimes we lose him for a second. Go ahead, Glenn. Keep going. Sure. She, she was such an opponent of, of what Bush and Cheney were doing, not just legalistically, but she was arguing that it ought to have provoked much more outrage among the citizenry than it was. And she especially was vehement about the fact that whoever succeeded George Bush could not possibly take the position that we should just move on from those crimes, that instead we have to have full disclosure, allow courts to adjudicate whether or not what was done was illegal in order to restore national honor. And so she was really, a, a, for, for a Washington, a, a very um, outspoken advocate of the rule of law and of the idea that what Bush and Cheney did was not just wrong, but, but, but radical and extremist and dangerous and tyrannical. And what's interesting is, is that when she was appointed, she seemed like a natural choice for Obama because candidate Obama echoed many of those same themes. But as the Obama administration went on and it became apparent that what candidate Obama said bore very little resemblance to what President Obama was actually doing, he wasn't just he wasn't repudiating Bush Cheney executive power theories. He was embracing them. It became clear that the Obama administration would have a very difficult time having someone like Don Johnson head an office like the Office of Legal Counsel. And even though they had the votes throughout much of 2009, when they had 60 Democratic votes in the Senate, plus Senator Richard Lugar, the GOP senator from Indiana, her home state, who also said he would vote for her, her nomination, they never brought her up for a vote. They let her linger. And they never did anything in order to secure her confirmation. And finally, she withdrew. And, and the reason it's so significant is because it means that somebody who has her views, that the rule of law actually matters, that when presidents break the law, we have to have accountability and not say, well, we just need to move on the way that President Obama has done. It basically means that somebody like that can't be confirmed to an important office and that the Obama administration doesn't want somebody like that in a position of influence and, and authority. And I think it's quite a revealing moment. Uh, Glenn, the significance of Justice Kennedy being the one to choose the person who writes the decision if the uh, chief justice is not in the majority. Well, of course, Justice Kennedy has been the key swing vote on most of the important issues over the last decade, and and on and, and it's a sign of, of how conservative this court has become that he's actually considered a moderate. I mean, he was a solid right-wing choice by President Reagan. And yet he has been the key vote on uh, most of the executive power decisions of the last decade, imposing some restraints on what the president can actually do. And, and the ability of, of Justice Kennedy to choose who writes the opinion, I think, it illustrates how important of a voice he's become and how important it is to have somebody who will at least maintain the balance of the court, replace Justice Stevens in a way that doesn't shift the court to the right. And I think that ought to be the principal concern of, of all progressives. Finally, um, who would you like to see as Supreme Court Justice, Glenn Gerwald? Well, I think the, the choices that I'd like to most see are probably ones that aren't going to happen. As I indicated earlier, Harold Coe, the former dean of Yale Law School, and Stanford professor um, Pamela Carlin, and, and even Leah Sears, the former chief justice of the Georgia Supreme Court, are all exceptionally intelligent and, and capable justices who have indicated through a long record um, that they approach the law and the Constitution similar to the way that Justice Stevens does. Among 
among the three front runners, Diane Wood um, is a brilliant judge, and she's been viewed as the sort of liberal intellectual alternative to the conservative judges on the Seventh Circuit, like Judges Posner and Easterbrook. Um, and of the three front runners, she is clearly the one that progressives ought to be hoping that Barack Obama nominates. Uh, finally, Nan Aaron, if you haven't left very quickly, um, the involvement of right wing groups and decisions around who should be chosen and the significance of a confirmation hearing coming up for an appeals court judge this Friday? Well, I wanted to say, um, I think Lynn has, has very accurately taught, portrayed the role of these groups in sinking Dawn Johnson's nomination. And over the past few days, many of these same individuals has, have been whispering sweet nothings into the ears of the press and senators about various nominees to the Supreme Court. I think we have to accept the fact that no matter who the president puts up for the Supreme Court, they will resist, they will oppose, they will do whatever they can to defeat that candidate. And therefore, I think this is an opportunity for the president to choose someone that he likes uh, that would suit the country as a whole and not take into account the comments and words of various groups on the right whose only goal is to defeat not only this nomination, but frankly, the, the president's entire political agenda.